What is up everyone? I'm your girl Alicia G and I am doing a new thing where I am doing a review on things that I have attended. Not just movies anymore, people. I gotta upgrade my game. So this week I'm gonna be talking about Bid Summit, which is what I was able to attend thanks to my lovely work. Um, they sent me and my lovely friend Jasenia to go check it out, see what we can learn for our jobs. So I'm gonna be talking about and reviewing some of the issues, some of the things that were actually really positive, some of the really cool people I met, what you should expect when you go to Bid Summit if you do decide to go, and what you should have prepared. Very simple stuff. Let's get into it, people. So, first things first, Bid Summit was an interesting thing. Overall, it was a really fun experience. Um, I'm glad that I was able to do it at least once. Personally for me, I don't think I would do it again and I'll go into that a little bit in a second on why. Pretty much it's very simple. Vid Summit, for those of you who do not know, is kind of like VidCon. The only difference is VidCon is specifically for very, very popular YouTubers, um, their channels promoting the stuff that they're working on as well as other big companies coming together and kind of just tabling, showing you stuff. I'm here, you can take photos. Vid Summit is hosted by Daryl Eves um, and two other YouTubers, one of them being Mr. Beast, who I'm not very familiar with, and another one. Um, and pretty much he wanted to come together and create a summit or a place for fellow creators and other people that want to learn how to better their YouTube channels. And literally, I mean learn from diagnostics, statistics, best ways to improve their engagement, best ways to improve their likes. And even for those people that maybe were like, I want to do YouTube full time, but I don't know what to do. And there was speakers on that as well. So overall, it was that was the gist of it. There was some parties, there was some networking opportunities, and I'll also get into that in just a second. Now, let us get into what I learned from Vid Summit. So first, I learned um, that one, you should always have business cards ready to go. Super easy. So if you are a YouTuber, I know you might be thinking. Do I need a business card? I'm a YouTuber, I just can give them my channel. Well, it's super easy if they can just hand you a card with your channel, with your photo, and other social pages that you have. Just hand it to them. For me, I only had my business card, so it's kind of a little less um, personal, I guess, because I was there for a business. Two, be prepared to talk to people. I'm used to going to trade shows and going to things with uh, people that are very kind of kind of closed off. You kind of have to like work your way to talking to them, but don't at Bit Summit you are like you are there. I we spoke with a few people that are a little in your face. Um, they were very nice, but a little too much for me. Um, but you know, just know what you're doing there. A lot of people are selling their channel, selling themselves to you, and there's some people that are marketers there that want to try and help you out. So if you don't have your information down, they're kind of going to attack you with things that you need. So if you have, you know, those types of informations, like how many people are watching, how many subscribers do you have? A lot of the basic stuff that you can just look on your channel with that will save you time, energy, and crying in the bathroom. I didn't do that. But I'm just saying like crying in the bathroom if you get stressed out. Number three. I learned um, on top of that just some really cool ways to help improve my Instagram because that's what I usually focus on personally wise. I focus on that. Same thing for my uh, for my work. We focus more on Instagram and Facebook than we necessarily do YouTube. And they also, uh, one of the people, and I'll show you my goodie bag, that's why this is here. Pretty much you get to really talk to people and they really give you some decent advice. Sometimes it's personal, sometimes it's business wise, whether you're selling something on your channel, whether you're reviewing something on your channel like I'm doing right now. They're just helpful. So those were the things I learned from this summit. Now, these are the things <laughs> that I had issues with on Bit Summit. Problem number one, lack of communication. And what I mean by communication, I mean by simply having a pamphlet explaining where certain rooms are, explaining what certain things are as well. Like, so example, there was multiple sessions at multiple times. So one session I did was how to make your video sound better while there was another session going on across the way. Now, the reason I'm talking about communication is because one, this hotel that we were at had horrid, horrid, horrible Wi-Fi service. So most people couldn't get on the internet, couldn't check the app because VidSummit, they have an app that you can use um, to check out all the classes, to check the schedule, to check the times. But 
if your app isn't working, which most people's weren't, and your Wi-Fi is not working because the Wi-Fi service sucked at this hotel, you don't have any form of information. So as a backup, they should have had a pamphlet explaining literally everything with times and placement information. So that was my biggest issue. Also, and this will kind of go into another issue I had, which was lunch, but not knowing information about food. And that's kind of big when you have at least over 150 people in your guest list and you don't know what, no one knows where to get the food that is technically included in your ticket. Problem number two, the goodie bag. It's a pretty goodie bag, you know, basic, simple. The goodie bag I had an issue with is because the first night during registration, and this also goes into communication, I was told along with my friend Jesenia uh, that we would get a goodie bag if we came back downstairs at five o'clock, we'd get a goodie bag. And we came back downstairs at five o'clock, no one had goodie bags. We were looking around, no one had it. So maybe we're like, eh, maybe they're late. An hour later, no goodie bags. Hour and a half later, no goodie bags. Luckily, Jasenia decided to get up and ask somebody, which we should have done in the first place. And they said, oh, they're gonna be on the other side of the hotel, which is where some of the only restaurant of the hotel was, as well as like a little, another room where there was a party going on, which was a networking party. So we went over. The only thing we saw were tables of stickers, pop sockets, like crappy little light up stuff, nothing great. So we're just thinking, where's the bag? They said goodie bag, not goodies. There's a difference. The food was kind of okay. There was really not much left by the time we got over there because we had been waiting for goodie bags on the other side of the hotel for about an hour, 30 minutes, talking to people um, and talking in our little circles. So we ended up just asking, hey, so where are the goodie bags? We were told to come over here. Oh, well, Novak, which was one of the sponsors that was passing out bags, they would be giving out goodie bags here and there, but it wasn't guaranteed to everyone and they're really fancy backpacks. He's like, yeah, those are technically goodie bags, I guess, but there's no goodie bag. It's the stuff on the table. We're just like, the, f the fuck? Excuse me? Um, this, this shit that I can get at work? So that was annoying. So for the goodie bags, I will show you what's in them. And the biggest thing that's in them is a SwitchPod, which the creators um, were there of SwitchPod. And this is a, a really cool new tripod that you can get, as well as I got some business cards from some tables. And then of course you have stuff about simple podcasting. So if you are simple cast, so if you wanna do a podcast, this is a great place to do it. They have a really cool checklist, which I liked. Um, as well as some other places such as Stage 10. You also have TubeBuddy and Licked, which I thought was great. The only issue is Licked is all about music that you can get to add to your videos that I'm gonna be posting on this. And you get five free songs with this card. The issue that I have is the minimum payment is about uh, $8 per song, but it's only for like pretty much content that has 50,000 subscribers or above. I don't, so there we go. I will say it's cool because it has VidSummit. Yeah, but it's got VidSummit on there, which is kind of cool, so you know where you got it. Um, and it's called SwitchPod because it switches out into the tripod, so when you want to put your phone down or your camera down, you can easily just switch it out instead of having to unfold it. Let's see if I can do it. Switches back. Now these go about for 100 bucks, and the presenters were very cool. They had really good things. And they're actually giving us affiliate stuff so we can make money off this. So I'll put my link um, down in the comment section for you guys. So if you want to purchase it, I haven't used it just yet because I haven't had an opportunity because I've been busy. Um, but it's actually pretty cool. It's very lightweight. It's not big. It's not heavy, um, easy to travel. I probably take this because I'm an actor. And if I need to do like a quickie self tape, I'll have a tripod and it's, I can easily just hide it in my suitcase somewhere, my backpack, it won't get lost. So not much in the giveaway bag, but the switch pod is really cool. Um, so hopefully I can use that a little bit more, but that's kind of really it. So that was a little like, I kind of wish there was more stuff, like simple stuff. It could have been like a keychain or some shit like that, but hey, whatever. Can't, beggars can't be choosers. My next problem was the food. You're paying such a high price for a ticket. You're already paying for hotel stay and for some people, air stay. There's a lot of people that traveled from like Australia, New Zealand, England, Ireland. So you're expecting a lot of stuff for your money. Why the fuck did they give a subway? And they didn't, now, okay, I should, per, I should say, I don't mind the subway. The issue I had is the simple fact that you not only had to get subway and it was a box lunch, so you couldn't purchase whatever you wanted, 
but you had to walk around the corner down the street to the subway, which again, it was like, seriously, you couldn't have just brought the box lunch to the hotel, which I've seen multiple trade shows and events do on small budgets. It's not a hard thing to do. They just ship it over. And there's issues at the subway because you had so many people that are in line for this blocking entry and exit towards a parking lot and structure for LAX. Because once again, we were literally smack dab right by LAX. So that was a huge problem capacity wise for the subway and people left trash everywhere. I saw boxes on just seats in the hotel because people would bring it back. So it was just an issue. There was no trash around or anything. So my biggest issue with the subway thing is you're paying a certain amount of money to get to these things and really like, and I get it, most of the, it's supposed to be for networking, this and that, but and food should be like last thing on my mind. I shouldn't give a shit about food. But one, I'm a big girl and I like to eat. But two, you're spending a lot of money to be there. The least they can do is have a nice, either delivered lunch from, which could be from Subway, have it there, or have a nice sit down lunch with everybody so everyone can kind of meet, everyone can be at tables with people and they can talk and eat. My next problem is they had a lot of really cool sounding um, lessons that they had throughout the two days that were there. But when I got to some of them, a lot of them to me seemed very mislabeled. For example, one of them was uh, how to make your small name into a household brand. So I'm thinking it's about branding yourself, branding your channel. But when I got there, it was literally just about a guy marketing if you're physically selling an item. So for example, they were talking about deodorant. Lumi, for example, I'll shout them out here because I wanna use them. Lumi, uh, which is for females and for men and it's for you know every part that stinks. Like, um, but they were just showing us commercials, kind of creative parts and pretty much the gist of what I got from that whole thing was Go cheap first, then go expensive. Don't go expensive first, and then go cheap. And I'm just like, okay, well, out of everything I got from a lot of talks was be unique, be you, make sure you're personal, make sure you know how to strategize, have a niche. So it was just like the same thing I heard from almost seven different people. And it was just kind of annoying. One of my last things, the biggest thing, were these massive giveaways. They were decently massive. They were giving out like mattresses, year supply of cereal, $500 gift cards, drones, um, small drones, and some other like basic stuff like shirts and hats. The issue I had with it was the way they gave them out. I totally understand wanting to like pump everything up, but you literally have a five minute window for giveaways on their schedule and every time they would go about 20 minutes over interrupting the presenters that were next and also messing up the presenters that were going and continuing to stay on schedule in the other rooms. That was a big issue. Two, the way they did it were with games and a lot of the way that they figured out contestants were throwing bean bags or throwing like beach balls in the air, which is cute, it's fun, but not for 150 people and up in a huge auditorium where only people can, where they were literally only hitting people in the first, second, third, or fourth row in the main section, not really reaching the people on the right or the left. And on top of that, they weren't getting, they weren't hitting other people. I saw so many repeat people try and win certain things. And I'm just like, this is not fair. I saw a child, a 10 year old that was there who won a $500 gift card for a photo thing. Not, I couldn't remember what it was. And which was great, good for him. He won it fair and square. But then he went up to try and win a drone. I'm just like, dude, he already won it and there's literally other people that are like dying to win stuff. Like it was like Hunger Games up in that bitch. One more overview before you guys are like, oh my God, this bitch is annoying. One, communication. They were really bad at it. They needed to work on it. Two, the food. If you're gonna do a big summit like that, make sure that before you pick your location that they're gonna have good food around the area and you can let people know if you don't want the food that's there, here are some other restaurants that are around the area that are working with Bid Summit for like a deal. Simple. Three, the presenters mislabeled things. It felt like a lot of the presentations were mislabeled and they did not have fun presentations that kept people intrigued. A lot of them were kind of boring and a lot of them were due to just simply the presentation itself, not the information. And last but not least, the massive giveaways need to be fixed because it's un it was unfair 
and they did it they did it way too long the last massive giveaway of thursday night took almost an hour because and they still had crap to give away but everyone started leaving because they realized they're not going to have any chance of getting anything so real fast the ways we can fix the vid summit the ways we can help them out if they listen to this video and they appreciate or listen to other people's reviews of it one i talked to someone named robbie christmas and i'm going to put his stuff down below because he's got some great music super nice guy from seattle and he mentioned doing a marketing like a power marketing part I'm like, that's super smart. I mean, instead of doing a ton of, in of sessions, have sections throughout the day for about 15 to 20 minutes where people can market and talk to fellow creators and really get involved with people. So they have to get shaken up, whether it be in the same building, same area, and they all just have to talk to each other and talk about what they want to do and see if they can work together. Two. An easy way to fix it, like I said, communication. Have a pamphlet listing out the schedule. Don't just rely on the app because one thing you can always count on, do never rely on internet or internet service because it's always spotty depending on where you are, especially if you're by LAX. Three, when it comes to the giveaways, it's super easy. You literally have everyone's information that is attending and you have everyone sign in. So anyone that signed in one can get a raffle ticket those could be for the big ticket items like the $500 gift cards, good mattresses, the cereal for a year. And you, and that's a way too, it can be fair. You can call up the raffle ticket and you can still play the games, but you at least everyone has an opportunity to come up and play a game. Super simple. And you can also just put in people's names, people's channels names, and randomly just look through the channel who you feel like is going to really benefit from, I don't know, some Adobe tools, which they gave away. Boom, put it up there because you had people do videos for you. Do that. Super, super simple stuff. And last but not least, I forgot to mention this. Um, they had some parties um, on Wednesday that I had no idea about because no one really told me um, except one person I talked to. And she was nice. I was like, yeah, if you want to come out. And I just thought it was just generally them hanging out at, a, at Dave & Buster's. Not that there was actually a networking party at Dave & Buster's. There was no information on that. No no information on how to get there, where to go. So it just seemed very unorganized. I'm just gonna say something maybe you guys should look into with some of the people. If you wanna make a little bit more money and monetize some certain things, the biggest thing that people were saying in networking events and also on Facebook and Yelp is that the networking events for this event is huge. It's what a lot of people look forward to more than the panels. I think if you guys separated having the parties and the networking events and making them a little bit bigger and longer and sell that as a separate ticket and you can probably make a lot more money via a cheaper ticket way cheaper that was my last sorry i thought i had i was done no one more thing make that a cheaper ticket like 150 dollars they get into the event they get into the networking event for free and they get into the parties for free they can mingle they get a free drink ticket and now if they want to do the networking event the parties and they want to enjoy the panels as well as the massive giveaways then you sell the rest of it it's just like newport beach film festival that's how they do it if you want to see the movie and you want to attend the party after that's fine it's going to be this cost but if you just want to attend the party it's going to be this cost so it's not going to hurt you if you separate it this ticket is way too expensive i truly truly believe that this is way too expensive for what i got this weekend for the disorganization, the lack of internet, kind of a lot of the information being repetitive, I do not think this is worth $700, $800 like I saw on the website. Yeah, you get to meet some cool creators. Yeah, you get to talk to some people that have some high-end subscribers. But and in all reality, I don't think it's good. I think it's way too expensive. So overall, I think VidSummit is good at... Vid Summit has some things they can fix. They have some things that are positive, just like anything. But my biggest thing is, I believe that Vid Summit is really great for people that's channels are about maybe like, I don't know, 20,000 and up subscriber wise. They can learn a little bit more to really, really increase that. And for beginner beginners that have no idea what's going on. But people in the middle, or people who don't really know, don't wanna really deal with YouTube, I don't think this is worth it. So, I know that was a long video, I apologize, but um, I hope everyone has a great week. Um, I hope you guys listen to this video, like, subscribe, 
um, comment let me know what you guys thought if you went to vid summit if you're thinking about going to vid summit let me know and i will literally give you all the information all of the cards that i have all the just so you can see what i'm talking about and make sure before you do anything before you go google vid summit really look into it really look into the presenters are they going to help you this year because some i really presenters are a big thing because they had presenters last year that i really want to see that weren't there this year so just make sure you really check it out really find this information and take your time once again i'm your girl Lisa g and this was my weekly review so i hope you have a wonderful weekend i'll talk to y'all later remember like subscribe <laughs>